Good morning, church. It's so good to have you on this uh, Sunday school lesson. Uh, you'll have to bear with me. I'm using a new camera on my phone, so a new phone. So if something happens, just blame it on the phone. Uh, as you know, for this Sunday school unit, we have been going over the different themes of Advent. Uh, and in Advent, we have kind of three ways of of looking at um, of living into Advent in the Christmas season. One is we remember God's promises. We look back into the Old Testament, to the Hebrew Bible, to look at God's promises and, and how they um, foretell the God's salvation, the coming of the Messiah, and, and of course the, the uh, new heaven and new earth that is to come in Jesus' second coming. And then we, of course, celebrate Christ's birth. That is, of course, the reason for Christmas. And then we also anticipate Christ's second coming. So we uh, noted last week that Advent is, is kind of the coming together of these three themes. And part of remembrance and anticipation and celebration is preparing the way of the Lord. So today, for our lesson, we're going to talk about what does it mean to prepare ye the way of the Lord? We have two scripture lessons today, one from Malachi and one from uh, the Gospel of Mark. But before we get there, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you that we can gather together. Though it is not uh, like we're used to, we are um, privileged to be together in, in this format uh, and more than privileged to study your word together, which is a source of life, uh, a source of hope, and a resource to meet within its pages the very Spirit of God uh, and of Jesus Christ whom we follow. Be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, gang. So what we're going to do is um, talk about, uh, we're going to read Malachi 3 and then read Mark 1. So we're going to read both passages and then talk for a few minutes. So this is Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. That's Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Uh, this is in the Old Testament, if you're looking in your Bible, uh, considered one of the minor prophets. And um, let's jump in. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. Now, Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. What we believe is the fulfillment of and uh, the inclusion of this, the, the Malachi's promise, and wrapped up in the ministry of John and in the introduction of Jesus. So Mark 1, 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make its paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Both of these passages, as you can tell, are about preparation, and Advent certainly is a time of preparation. The first lesson from Malachi comes uh, from a time of great hope and anticipation for the coming of the Lord. Of course, one of those prophecies we do see within the prophets of the Old Testament. And there are really two kind of key figures that we learn about here in Malachi. The messenger that prepares the way of the Lord, and then the Lord himself who comes according to Malachi 1. Uh, or chapter 3, verse 1, into the temple courts. We note that this is a messenger of delight, that expresses a covenant of delight, but also comes 
as a messenger of judgment. It says that the, the, the one who comes in the name of the Lord, uh, or the Lord who comes, will be like a refiner's fire, like a fuller soap, one who purifies silver. So this isn't necessarily a, a picture of a very uh, easygoing Messiah, but one who will bring both judgment and salvation. Uh, something we'll talk about more at length in the uh, sermon this Sunday. Uh, and so we see that that is the foretelling. In Mark chapter 1, we begin the gospel not with a the birth narratives, but rather with uh, this uh, foretelling of this messenger, but from the point of view of Isaiah, uh, another prophet, and then also uh, the introduction of John the Baptist, and then later Jesus. And John comes to us from the wilderness place, so not necessarily from the temple, but out in the wilderness where uh, Scripture tells us many uh, Jews, had uh, Judeans, had had gone out to the wilderness place to find that new community, that people of God, because they uh, they knew and they felt that much of what was taking place in Jerusalem, with the high chief, the, the chief priests and the Sanhedrin, uh, was was quite corrupt. So a lot of the Jews kind of went out into the wilderness to seek new community in God. And John the Baptist uh, was baptizing people as a way to initiate a symbolic act of people separating themselves from the slavery of sin and walking through those waters like the uh, Israelites did when they came out of slavery from Egypt in a new place and a new life and a new community of repentance uh, and of living into uh, John's ministry, but then um, soon after Jesus's ministry. Uh, but one of the things that John says, not necessarily in this passage, but later on, if you read, is that not only will, will, uh, well, we be baptized with water, but we'll be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And if you go in Luke, it's, uh, John says that one will baptized with fire uh, as, a, as a, a person on the threshing floor. So both of these prophecies, uh, the prophecy in Malachi and then the fulfillment in John's ministry and then Jesus' ministry, bring to us both judgment on the one hand and salvation on the other. How are we to prepare for that? Stand in awe and acknowledge the judgment of God, that uh, that we are sinful, repent, and then live into the beautiful delight of the salvation of God. Uh, one of the things we note that we prepare our hearts for that kind of message. You hear it often said um, in different situations, no one prepared me for this. Uh, think about COVID. No one prepared us for this. Uh, preparation is sometimes uh, rushed. Sometimes we can plan ahead, but oftentimes when we confront things that we're not used to, uh, or even things that we aspire to, it's hard for us to prepare for every contingency. And um, and often we say in that situation, no one prepared me for this. I, I think about uh, the time I, I became a, a uh, I decided to ask Jesus into my heart. I was 12 years old, down in the First Baptist Church of Perrine, Florida. Uh, I had known Jesus my whole life, and had gone to church, but it was a uh, that time in my life where I wanted to make a definitive decision to accept Jesus as my Savior. And it, everyone celebrated the fact that I had become a Christian, but no one prepared me for this. No one prepared me for a life of having to to always serve the Lord and to neglect my uh, my my sinful desires and wants. Do we really prepare people for the salvation that comes in Jesus Christ? We celebrate salvation, we celebrate the confession, we celebrate when, when even one sinner repents, but do we really prepare each follower of Jesus for what it takes to follow Christ? That what we call a cross-shaped journey of continually denying ourselves and dying to old self in order to live for Christ and live into the new life that Christ offers. Are we prepared for that? And uh, when I became a Christian, no one prepared me for that, and I'm still living it to this day of what it means to cast off the old and welcome new life in Christ and continuing to wrestle with those things that entangle me. It's an ongoing, lifelong journey uh, in which uh, we are being prepared for eternal life with, with God. Another thing I, I, I said no one prepared me for this was ministry. And I remember in college, I um, felt the Holy Spirit leading me into full-time vocational ministry and again, celebration and excitement, told my family, my wife, uh, with, with a little bit of hesitation, not, uh, not knowing she had married 
was going to marry a pastor, um, had to also pray into that. And um, with all the excitement and the celebration and then the ongoing training that I had received going into seminary after college, there are so many things I didn't prepare for. The hardships of ministry, the rigors of vocational ministry, the, the emotional... Um, the emotional investment it takes to 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 carry uh, the the sorrows and the celebrations, the, both the grief and the gratitude of 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 God's people uh, into um, into the the most sacred places uh, in which we walk in concert and in partnership with the Spirit of God. Uh, I know that our ministry is is a shared ministry. I don't carry all the burdens, and I'm not a, a martyr. Uh, and uh, I'm good at delegating, but at the same time, no one prepared me for that ministry. Another thing that uh, I, I felt takes took preparation was being a husband. When I got married again, celebration. Everything, every major event starts at celebration, and then reality hits, right? We call it the honeymoon phase of, of having to grow together with a spouse and uh, eventually having children and being scared to death with, with our first uh sign of our first pregnancy, you know, when Christina was pregnant with Haley, we, we were excited, but we were scared to death and then welcoming a new life into the world of, of having to, to carry that burden of being, of caring for another human being, uh, you know, and the weight of that. And then of course, having number two with Hayden, uh, no one prepared me for that. <laughs> I know I wanted it. Uh, but there's so many things that there's only so much preparation you can do. Uh, this Advent season, as we walk with Christ, there are many things, there are many ways we can prepare ourselves, but there are many ways in which we are, are jolted as a follower of Christ into the fiery furnace of transformation. And I think that the, the promise and prophecy of, this, of these lessons is, uh, the emphasis is on the delight of the covenant, the promise, but it's also on the on the, the fact that we enter into a new life in Christ that can be uh, very transformational, transformative, and that oftentimes when we're called to change or, tra or, or be transformed into greater growth in Christ and into the image of Christ, that the Holy Spirit leads us into places that, that hurt. Uh, that bring about God's discipline in our life. Just read he the book of Hebrews. It talks about what father or parent or mother would, would spare his or her child discipline in order to make that child the best person that that child could be. So too, does God want our best for us? And that requires, and many times, entering into that fiery furnace in which God purifies us of all the dross and all the impurities uh, of the many, many things we have in our life. Nobody prepares you for that, especially when you come to faith maybe at such a young age or or even contemplating coming to faith or being baptized, you think, do I really want to give up all the things that I like that are displeasing to God? It's hard. It is a fiery furnace of transformation. But you know what? Would I give up being a Christian if I knew where I would be today? I wouldn't. I would do it all over again. Would I give up being a full-time minister if I knew just how... Uh, uh, how uh, complex and complicated that position is, not at all. I would do it all over again. I love, love being a pastor. Would I give up being a husband and a father if I had the chance to do it all over again? I wouldn't. I love being a husband and I love being a father. I love my family and my children. So you think of all the hardships that come in life. You ask yourself, even when those hardships bring transformation and the the furnace of, of growing in Christ. Would you do it over again? I pray that you would say you would do it over again because the benefits and the salvation and that eternal grace and glory that you live into is so much more worth it than, than the stuff I've had to give up or the stuff I've had to sacrifice or the decisions that, that I had left behind in order to make other decisions. Um, I would gladly do it all over again for the glory of God, and for salvation in Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson, and we'll see you soon.